16 years ago, we started a television show that we hope would last six months. <laughs> this is our 822nd episode of the sports show. Every one of them has been done with the four of us as the, at least the, obviously fill-ins over the years, but never was someone gone for good. Today we salute the one and only Dark Star, Mike Max, Patrick Royce, and Sid Hartman, and a seat reserved for the Dark Man. Patrick, um, we will revisit some stories that people have not heard about him, <laughs> and that now we're free to tell, and uh, we will play some of his more famous moments. Uh, most of them came in the, on the commercial end on this show, but uh, you and he, we're above and beyond. You were friends. You watched games. I mean, this has been one strange weekend. Yeah, it has. Uh, I was. Uh, there's a bunch of them to tell, and uh, I think the last time he was over at my house, this is a classic dark star. I'm walking into Barley's. My wife's out of town. I'm walking into Barley's. He's, uh, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm about to buy myself a porterhouse to grill. Should I buy two? And he said, yes, buy two. I'll come over and watch the ball game. Well, I get to the meat counter, and I said, you know, blah, 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 give me a couple of big porterhouses, and the guy says, hey, how's your friend Dark Star doing? I used to cut meat for him at Ridgedale. I used to cut those big steaks for him, and I said, well, cut one of them. Cut a big one yeah. here, because one of them's for him. He knew everybody. Everybody. Everybody who did anything for him. He knew him by name. He schmoozed them. You know, I wrote a column the other yeah. day about the, where the pizza gets delivered, and he yells, hey, Richie, is that you? The pizza, you know the <laughs> pizza delivery. Who knows the pizza delivery guy except Dark Star? Sidney, explain Dark Star well, through, through your eyes. All-time, all-time character, <laughs> no doubt, without a doubt. I'll say one thing. He would try to be, he was a, helped a lot of people help. I mean, never for a couple of times I thought I had a lot of connections. He had more than I had, I'll <laughs> tell you that. He had connections getting uh, uh, hockey tickets, how about different tickets? I tried like that to get some for uh, uh, boxing tickets in Vegas, and he got them right, right away. <laughs> he was he always your last resort, though, <laughs> because you, di you didn't want to owe him what? The only thing, I, he and uh, uh, a one other guy is a lot like uh, like him. He would spend a lot of money to get show that he and spend the money for the for the for the hockey for the uh, tickets the fight yes and uh, pay big for it yes and you you'd be you'd pay him for maybe a half <laughs> yeah, because he actually paid uh, a lot of, a lot of big uh, money to yeah. to do it yeah remind of one guy. Who operates like that? Uh, uh, sit behind the uh, University of uh, Minnesota from football, or the yep. of the uh, uh, of the. Uh, Remember, he sat on the floor of the Timberwolves too yeah. for years. Remember that? Yep. We go over there and call him. Uh, you know, you know, did okay though. The uh, the Timberwolves tickets came in handy for him whenever the Lakers when the when they got to the Western he Conference money Finals back. against the Lakers. He loved sitting on the floor. He loved uh, getting the attention, but if the price was right, those tickets were gone. gone. Dark, Dark didn't see a Laker game. I can tell you that. <laughs> the price, he, the uh, price was too generous. He had a harder, really hard of gold, and I didn't get upset at you. In my case, uh, he always Many calls times. me. Uh, I pick up the phone and said, "How are you doing? Let's <laughs> have a come together." You don't get Bob Hagen a lot. Yeah. They, they turn out to be, but I don't Good know friends, yep. how they became uh, together all the time. Hagen and he always had, uh, always together the time. One of the things that you enjoyed, though, the most is we'd come in here and we didn't know what commercial was coming next because Dark was out doing commercials all the time. And so we put together some of them, and you'd always just look at them, and, and we, we used to just watch your face and expression. One of our all-time favorites is one of them they did for his good friends at Canterbury Park. Dark Star on Canterbury Park. Go ahead and roll it. Hey, everybody. This is Dark Star. I'm up to Twin Rapids, Kaiser Chief Highway 10 and Foley Boulevard. He's living without question. I've been to the Twin Cities with my main man, Tony Vance. Memorial Day sale. We're blowing everything out. Everything's got to go dark. We're going to do it. What else is there? That Sebring. Unbelievable. The Sebring's incredible. It, it is incredible. Accessorized to the max. And those minivans, unbelievable. 150 of them. Great. What more do you want? We got everything. Noah's Ark here for the minivans. We got two everything. 
Come and see us at Coon Rapids Chrysler Jeep Highway 10 and Foley, Bo Foley Boulevard. Easily without question. The best dealership in the Twin Cities. Isn't that special? That's special, huh? And I think in the rich tradition of Dark Star commercials, that wasn't the camera. No, that wasn't. <laughs> but, but that. No, yeah, that's no. what he said. Right, we never <laughs> claim perfection. No, we never, uh, ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever. No. Uh, quick funny aside on Coon Rapids Chrysler for me. We, uh, my wife was selling ads at the time for a, a magazine, and she said, uh, I met these guys, they asked about Dark Star, because they said, you know, they knew you knew them. She said, I think they might be a good fit. And so I said, okay. I called them up, I said, Dark and I'll come up and meet and see how they knew me. So Dark goes up there and meets him for the first time, but they had heard of him because of the car business, right? And so Dark dazzles him. Uh, <laughs> Vance Birch, the whole crew that we had on for years. And, uh, and, and so the, he gets him to advertise on the TV and the radio side. So two weeks later, they're already on the radio side. The first spot I hear Dark say, I've known these guys for 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> they will not steer you wrong. Oh. I, like the, uh, I like the Rush Creek one. Rush Creek was an early advertiser. Yeah. And, and you guys were out there meeting with the oh. Rush Creek folks and selling them, well, you better. We got, we're going here, we're leaving here, and we got a meeting with, I don't know, some other what happened was new Daily Fee I was just course. trying to help, we were just getting the show going, and we meeting with Ed Money. Yeah. And, and they were already there when I got there. And I sat down, and Dark says, <laughs> Maxie, just so you know it's been covered, I already told him about the, the offer that we've got from Interlochen, but I, I would prefer to go with him. I've already covered that part of that. <laughs> we had no offers. Take a break as we remember Dark Star. The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Canterbury Park, 24-7 Card Club. Don't forget the Card Club at Canterbury Park. And by Cambria, makers of quality court services. Call 1-866-CAMBRIA. And by Cuisine Concepts, Bar Abilene at Lynn Fremont in Uptown Minneapolis. And Franklin Street Bakery at 11th and Franklin in South Minneapolis, just down from Mall of America Field. And Taste of the NFL. Proud to be the premier Super Bowl party with a purpose, to support hunger relief locally and nationally. And by Ticket King. For the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. Let's talk real natural beauty. It's elegant, it's effortless. It's Cambria Natural Court Surfaces. I love Cambria because it makes any room drop fit gorgeous. And yet it's incredibly carefree. No sealing, no polishing, no special cleanup. And since Cambria Quartz is naturally long-lasting, it just gets better over time. Now that's a beautiful thing indeed. See for yourself the true beauty of Cambria. Looking for a nice, big, juicy rack of ribs, fabulous chops, huge steaks, and the buddy bowl? Then J.D. Hoyt's is a place for you. Hoyt's opened in 1983. Mike Andrews and his partner John White have kept this Minnesota tradition at the top of the food chain. Managing owner Pat Montague gives us a tour. At J.D. Hoyt's, enjoy a relaxed atmosphere, great food, friendly service, private dining room, second to none happy hour, and great outdoor dining, just blocks from the new ballpark. Located at 394 in North Washington, locally owned, nationally known, Hoyt's. Eight, ninety-nine, baseball and Hoyt, so close you can taste it. Oh man, locally owned, nationally <laughs> known, J.D. Okay. Hoyt sympathy goes out. I got a question. Everybody. And and that leads into, go ahead. I got a question. Who was the cameraman on that shoot? Did I don't know? know. Did he actually take those 100 steps or did he miss about 90 <laughs> in the middle there? I want to I want to know if we got conned here on this ad or if Dark really walked up the street. What do you think, Sid? Well, like I said, <laughs> different as far as uh, if, if somebody had a, uh, a, 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 a light detector. problem or a lie detector, which one? If they had a problem, he was there for you. If you had a lie detector, he wasn't. He didn't want to be there. Well, tell us, but you, the party of Jesus. If you buy some kind of a, 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 a lie detector a, test, yeah. Well, what you call it? Yeah. He'd give you three times as much uh, than he's really paying for it, nothing like it, uh, it. Oh, that uh, thing at the Hoyt's the other night we were talking about, though. Uh, the party. 
22 people show up. I think 24, I counted, 24. Sid. You were right yeah, up there. Yeah, you're in the front seat. You had Dark, uh, and you were sitting next to Dark and Hagen. And yep. uh, the, what did you think of that party at Hoyt's the other night that Dark hosted? Fantastic party. And great it's food, everything. Unbelievable. Yeah. Everybody had uh, every kind of um, food imaginable. Kind of food. Everybody was nothing. Uh, nothing cheap about cheap, that. So cheap. He picked up the whole like, Money, 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 money. He was spending. What a collection of uh, you happy. What a collection, though. All his radio buddies, Joe Friedberg, Sidney, uh, Bobby Hagan, and uh, Stewie Voigt. Just quite a collection of people. You know, we're talking about the ads, though, that ran. Here, here's another one. Here's another Dark Star production that you're seeing on the Ford show. That was a good one. When he came back, we didn't know what he had. He started that one. I said, man alive, this guy will... The great thing about Dark, no level of embarrassment. There was no shame. There was no shame. There was nothing he would not do. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, absolutely correct. He, he wanted to be... Uh, he came here. It started in 1985. He called our radio show, yeah. reported that Bud was going to resign. Nobody would heard it. He heard it from Mike Lynn's brother drinking at the Lafayette Club, as it turned out. And But he wanted to be a celebrity. He wanted to be somebody about town. I don't think it had to be radio. He didn't care what yeah. it was. He just wanted to be a guy that people knew. And and what do you remember about, about the first uh, time? What? How about he and, uh, what do you call the former? Tom uh, Kelly. Tom Kelly, the manager of the Twins. No. Oh, you're thinking of somebody else. But what about Talk Tom about Kelly? the former man. Manager of the uh, uh, the team. Yeah. And uh, 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 they were big buddies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom well, Kelly was just asking. It seemed like they were strange. Yeah, the uh, dark, dark, the world's greatest BSer, and Tom Kelly, who has less time for BS than anybody in the history of sports, and somehow yet they played golf about two or three days a week and were big buddies. So that was I think one. Kelly grew up in New Jersey with characters. So well, I he'd go down uh, to the training. get together with. Uh, the, the whole yeah. staff. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Take a break, come back, remembering Dark Star. No more wine for any. Puts their backs against the wall. And he is. It's Bella Note. She goes back to back to back as the distaff. Ella Skier and Derek Bell dominate the Northern Light in Turkey. They she can't believe what I have to a neck to a nose. And there she goes. He won nice as the debutante champion. Twins single game tickets are on sale now. Visit twinsbaseball.com today. Congratulations, class of 2012 from Franklin Street Bakery. Yeah. Stop on by there. Wayne Kostrowski and his entire crew send out their condolences to Dark Star, someone that he knew well and someone that he visited with frequently, especially at the State Fair. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Dark was Dark loved it there, Franklin Street Bakery. It was his kind of his kind of goods, as they say, his kind of fiddles, cupcakes and cakes and things like that. Stop on by Wayne Kostrowski, and out there sympathy, but stop on by. Um, lots of great places, and uh, Bar Abilene, of course, he owns and whatnot. And uh, D Dark, uh, how you, you know we were at the dinner the other night, so eclectic. You mentioned, yeah, right. Joe Friedberg on one end it, and meat sauce on the other. And that that was his thing, though, wasn't it? He liked to know everybody oh, yeah. from different. Yeah, I always said he had about four or five different pockets of friends, and a lot of times, 
you had no idea how close he was to that pocket of friends and he was he had them all over the place and uh he was everybody's uh everybody's pal and uh i'll tell you though i did have some great experiences going to la costa with him how we, so we go out and like we go out in august for about four or five years in a row we go to la costa play golf in the morning go to Del Mar in the afternoon, go to Tijuana at night half the time. But we always had the first tea time on the, because he went and the first thing he did is go schmooze up the starter. So we always had the first time, first tea time. And we had a, jo a caddy named the great James, a little bit cigar. He was always dark sky, dark and show up. And J the great James Brown would take care of us, man. He loved dark and dark. That's just the kind of guy that dark loves, you know. Well, he Here. did a great job for that guy selling uh, tickets to uh, all kinds of oh, different uh, people. Yeah. I mean, he had eight or ten. I don't know. We, with, uh, yeah, with with Ticket King. Yeah, yeah. It was great. He uh, did a heck of a job uh, establishing uh, that guy selling uh, <laughs> tickets for every kind of sports there was. And as you pointed out today, he did a great job for Canterbury Park. Yeah. Well, I think... Uh, the, ho the, the, the whole horse racing industry he, he stuck up for and lobbied for. I and think that the horse at the deal is going to be uh, miss him a lot. Yeah. Uh, all the oh, thing yeah. he done for that uh, for Canada. Some race. of that, some of that pub he gave might not have even been uh, paid advertising. Maybe not. <laughs> Let's go to another commercial, courtesy of our friend Dark Star. Pretty sorry we have to do this. This hurts me as much as it does you. It's time to play. We just don't think you're cut out to be a jockey. But I'm sure you'll find something soon. Jackie room. <laughs> that was the best. I had no idea what was coming when he first brought <laughs> no, that, to the, that uh, to the studio one day. Yeah, he wrote a, He came up with the creative ideas on a few of these, didn't he? He did. He would drive the ship and mm -hmm. he would meet with the, uh, boy, I could tell you some funny stories, but um, I don't know if you guys even know how this thing actually came together. 16 years ago, uh, Dark and I sit in the press box and he came up with the idea. And, uh, and he said, I can get Roycey you got to get sick. Because he said, I can't get sick. He said, I can't approach him on something like this. I said, great. Then we went to Kevin Couture, the then general manager at Midwest Sports Channel, and we met at, uh, right next to CC Radio there at Dan Kelly's. And he said, here's the idea. We want to try it. And Kevin said, well, can you, uh, we need some support from advertising. Dark went out to Grand Casino, signed them up, signed up two more within about two weeks, and we hoped that we could do it literally for six months. And we thought, you know, you remember that. Yeah, sure. But the old studio, we just showed up one day, and everybody, and, and, <laughs> and, we, and they started playing it on MSC and replaying it on MSC, and it, it took on a shelf life of its own. I don't know that we ever had a formal contract with anybody on this show. It was just kind of week by week. Well, he's different than every, every uh, other people. He, he had his own way of doing things. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean... Uh, you go around and perhaps he beg people to go on the, on the, on the show, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he almost he he couldn't say uh, the sponsors couldn't uh, uh, say yes that they want to uh, spend money. He he talked into it, him. it some yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, some people have that gift, and he had yeah. it. And uh, in fact, when well, he uh, two great businesses for him. He was in cars. Yep, and he was in radio. To being a BSer, that comes in handy let, in both fields. Let me ask you something, though, Pat, because I think he always thought of himself as a hustler that had to make his own. Oh, sure. But I thought that he was much more gifted than he ever gave himself credit for. You know, he could sit in the table and read the room, and he had yeah. an oh, innate yeah. sense about what the, that person's hot button was, which is why he was so good in sales and on the radio show. Street smart. Yeah, but I don't even think he understood how gifted he was in that area. Do you? Oh, I think he knew. <laughs> I think he did understand. I think he knew that I could turn this guy around. Fish was telling me the great story. He was on Tales of the Dark Side, and he ripped North Dakota, 
and they damn near tore, they damn near came down and lynched him. And six months later, he's leading the campaign for flood relief in North Dakota, and he's going to get the governor's medal. It was the greatest. You know what he did? <laughs> he did a thing on Midwest. The great, Sports great Trail. salesman. Yeah. No better salesman than anybody. No, it, he could talk people into going on this they show. They spent money on things they didn't even know they were spending it on. I won't miss them, I'll tell you that. Uh, you're going to have a tough job uh, <laughs> selling to all these people. Stuff going. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's take a break, and we'll, we'll finish up with some final thoughts on our friend, Dark Star. I Stay thought we were done. Here we are at our favorite place in the whole wide world, Ticket King, on the corner of Chicago and Washington in downtown Minneapolis. We love Ticket King. We love Ticket King. We love Ticket King. Don't forget, we've got Twins tickets. Let's go Twins. Let's go Twins. Let's go Twins. We know a lot about Twins, because we are Twins. We've got pro football tickets, too. Packers! 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 Vikings! We've got concert tickets, too. Madonna's coming. We love Madonna. Girls, don't forget, Wrong Direction's coming to town, too. One Direction, Daddy. Don't listen to what this idiot says. Come on down. It's the real thing. It's Ticket King. Only he could come through with wow. that. <laughs> like you said, Patrick, there was nothing that was off limits. Oh, man. Well, he had more ideas uh, how to sell people. Great uh, salesman. I mean, uh, he, he, like I say, they, he got those people, they, they couldn't say no. And that's right. That's a good salesman. Uh, I think it's the story that he had as much pride in selling as any is when they flew him down to the body solution place in <laughs> San Antonio and they introduced him and the, everybody in the room gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> Well, they had everyone moving talk, that product. Every radio, talking about, uh, every radio station uh, in the country was selling body solution. And he was their top seller. he was their number one guy. Talked about he owned uh, the horses. Yeah. He was the guy to put it together. We this and we that, like he owned Canterbury, it. Canterbury, yep. He talked about Canterbury Randy all the time, like he, like he owned the, not the, the Sampsons. Yeah, Randy Sampson was pretty it good. It was him. funny to be around him in the quiet moments because if you ever were with him in a public situation, he was always on stage. But, you know, we could sit around and watch a ball game, have some good talks, and, you know, talk about real life. And it wasn't yeah. all, it wasn't it's all BS, you know, talk about life. He was stuff. a vet. Times that was well, hey, DNA this was one of our great things. It wasn't ter successful. Yes. So when, Pretty short-lived, yeah. So when <laughs> Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys went 72 days, we had this mysterious guy named George on the air. He was an expert on short marriages. <laughs> 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 and how to get out of them, huh? Oh, he was great. He said, yeah. I'll say, uh, <laughs> you remember, he remember? was like a Hollywood uh, star with it. Yeah. You do anything, <laughs> anything to sell a, so, some deal. Remember at his at his mother's funeral, uh, you know he did. This is the most unique service any of us ever seen. He just did One the whole service. Yeah, he got up and did the whole thing, and it, and he had that great line uh, that his mom said, and I think this speaks kind of to all of us. She, he said, uh, she said to me, "I might love you, but I don't have to like you all the time." <laughs> remember that? Yeah. And I think in a place that resonated with. Cause, cause I think it, I think at the end of the service he told him to support his sponsors. Told all of his people <laughs> to please support his sponsors too. Wow. I think. Uh, Hope that all the sponsors stay with the show. <laughs> yeah, I think, hey, uh, we'll worry I about think that later. We'll worry about that later, Sid. Let's okay. talk about Dark here. Yeah, I okay. mean, uh, his mother was a great gal. She was classy. He used to come, over, used to come over to our place for Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, with, with my wife's family. And well, you were closer. To, and I she, think was, uh, she was a uh, you know, dignified gal, always wore the suits. And she come, she come in with her ne'er-do-well son, but she loved him dearly, you know. Yep, mm -hmm. and, and that's the way everybody kind of sure. felt. Everybody had bad moments with Dark. <laughs> I think he worshipped you more than any he did. friend he, well, he, he had. Uh, Patrick Royce, Tom Kelly, and Joe Friedberg and Randy Sampson. 
those four are the ones that yeah. well, it, 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 you, they could stop him in his tracks. If they said something, it changed. It, you know, just two weeks ago here, there was all you, you and he were just having your normal, mm -hmm. and, and Patrick set him straight in the commercial break like that. You know, yeah. and uh, and he could do that, and there's not many people that could do that to him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like we said, all time character of all time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it won't be well. The same. Uh, that apartment is, uh, there's a lot going on in Dark's life you don't know about. He's got the greatest collections of stuff you ever saw. Unbelievable. It, it, in the days to come, we may learn <laughs> well, well, if they ever get that far, man. Well, who knows? <laughs> there may be a few more stories to tell, but it won't be the same. 16 years coming in here and doing this. So we say goodbye with a picture of our good friend, Dark Star, and we thank you for all they did for all of us. Dark, we're going to miss you. We'll speak of you often and you will make us laugh for the rest of our lives. So long, everybody.